Today we are talking about the Minn Kota Raptors that I have on my boat, particularly the installation. We're going to add a couple of review points in here for you as well, but we'll talk about mounting options, putting the actual Raptors on the boat and how to mount the Raptors themselves, as well as the hydraulic pumps and fluid lines. Basically everything you need to put these items on the boat. Let's get into it. So I've been running the 10 foot Minn Kota Raptors on my boat for I guess about four months now. In particular, I've been running one. I wanted to see the difference between one and two and it has been murder. You might've seen it in some of the videos just off to the right there. I've had a spare one uh, sitting there while I made some assumptions or while I tested only having one versus testing having two. Well, today is the day where we put both of those together and we finally put the second Raptor on the boat. So I thought I'd fill through the process. I'm gonna chapterize the video so that you can go forward and backwards when you are installing the Raptor for yourself. So whilst this isn't a sponsored video, I will give some opinions on the products as we do go through the experiences that I had so far. And I do need to give a big shout out to Manning River Marine. These guys helped me out with the first install. They actually got me the product when it was in high demand here in Australia. And I have to thank those guys a lot for getting it delivered to my door and then providing some advice over the phone about the, how to install the product. I would recommend if you do have any hiccups or you're looking to purchase the product, you at least consider these guys because they've been able to help and produce the content that you're watching today. Finally, before we get into the install, if you're interested in the full review of this product. There'll be a link up here when it does come out. There will be most likely some sort of giveaway as well. So stay tuned for that. So when it comes to mounting the Raptors on the boat, there's basically three options. First of all, if you've got a hard and sturdy boat, maybe a reinforced area or an aluminium boat, you can direct mount the poles straight onto your area of the boat that you would like, typically the backside near the transom or something like that. The box itself comes with all the bolts that you need to do that. But if you're like me, you generally need a mount. If you have a fiberglass boat, or maybe you don't have that reinforced beefed up area. And we kind of make two different brackets and mounts when it comes to that. The first is a direct angle bracket mount and it looks like this. And this might be handy if you don't have a jack plate or you've got an off-shaped rear of the boat and you just want to go into the side there and that'll work a treat. For me personally, I went the jack plate mounting option. And why did I do that? Basically, the jack plate's designed for a bunch of tensional loads and it's really beefed up. Minn Kota have designed this bracket to go into a number of the jack plates that are quite common that get around and the Atlas jack plate is one of them. Again, everything you need is in the box and it's actually really easy to mount. It's probably the easiest part of the process. The pack comes in a cardboard box and like I said, everything you need that's in there. The main load is actually taken by the bracket itself, but the bind between the mount and the jack plate is made with a couple of really strong nuts and bolts. The first time, admittedly, I made an absolute mess with anti-seize all over the place. So this time, what I did was I initially put a small amount of anti-seize on, I passed the bolts through the mount and the jack plate, and then once everything was on there, I then coated the bolt with more anti-seize from the rear. After that was done, I then added the washers and the nuts and then using a spanner and a socket set, I tightened down the fixtures as tight as I could. If you've got a torque wrench, the technical rated amount is 50 foot pounds, but I didn't have one available, so I just doubled down and did it by feel. Like I said, it's an easy process, but make sure you don't take this red plastic retainer off. I'll get to that in a sec. One of the really nice things about the Raptor itself, I didn't really realize until I picked it up for the first time, is it is actually quite lightweight. You can see the hexagon sections that have been taken out of the Raptor. It's kind of like a yeah, racing vehicle where you take all the excess material out without affecting the integrity of the Raptor itself. So that makes it super strong, but still lightweight. And before you put the Raptor on, I'd recommend you do two things. One I've already mentioned, don't remove that red retainer. But the second is to add some tape around the end caps to the hydraulic lines that sit on the Raptor. Now those end caps tell you which side is the up and which side is the down, and they're color coded to make that the right way. But they do pop off kind of easily, particularly if you're moving the Raptor around and then passing the cable through the boat. You don't want to end up in a scenario a few steps down the path where you now have 
these two cables and you're not 100% sure which one up is and which one down is like happened to me. So back to the red retainer. You wanna keep that red retainer in there because it adds a little bit of purchase to the bolts and stops them from flailing around in the mounting bracket. It keeps everything nice and aligned whilst you're trying to line everything up and put the actual Raptor on. Pick up the Raptor, like I said, it's quite lightweight, but I put it over my shoulder and then walked it up to the mount and fed each individual bolt into location. And I fed the bolts through the Raptor holes and then just took the flange nuts that come with the box and just added those and, and, and figure tightened them down. I did one at a time and went around and then eventually the Raptor was effectively pseudo installed loosely of course, but it was in place. After that was done, I then grabbed the back of the red retainer and pulled it down and got it off the mark. After we got rid of the red retainer, it was then time to go down and remove uh, individual bolts, add anti-seize to the bolts and nuts, and then one by one, tighten them down. Now you don't want to tighten these down here all the way. You probably want to go to about 70%-ish, enough that the pole can stay in location, but can still be moved around. You want to try and here get the angle right. So you, you nip them up a little bit, you walk back to the back of the boat, you have a look at the angle that you've got it on, and then walk back up and then nip it up again. Every time that you, I guess, you, you come down with those nuts, the angle will change ever so slightly. So there is a little bit of back and forth here to try and get the right angle on the Raptor. So you notice at the end of the install too, once you've got fluid in the hydraulic line and everything's primed up a little bit, that the Raptor again will sit ever so slightly off. So for me personally, I had to go back at the very end of this install and then just correct the angle again for the last time. After I did that, it was fine, no worries at all. So before I started drilling in the boat to feed the hydraulic lines through the hull somewhere, or even passing the hydraulic lines into the boat, I worked out exactly where I wanted to mount my hydraulic pumps in the back of the boat. I think Minkota have done a good job here. The reservoir on the boat does actually angle around just in case your boat's a little bit tricky with space, but because I've got lithium batteries in the back, I've got plenty of room and I didn't really have that problem. The mounting plate that comes with it does have some holes in the back so you can mount them on a vertical surface like the wall of your trunk for example, but I went on a steel plate that's in the back of the Phoenix that sits above some live well pumps and it's easy there for me to remove or reinstall as required. Also, I do as little drilling into my fiberglass boat as possible, so that plate there for me can be removed and reinstalled if I need it. So to mount the pumps in the steel plate, I drilled a pilot hole in the plate and then orientated the serrated washer the right way, installed the stainless steel screws that came with the unit and Bob's your uncle, the mounts were in. Once I did that, I then got the washers and the large bolts, again, that come with the unit, and they fit into the rear of the actual hydraulic pump. You tighten them down a little bit, and then you can slide them basically into the bracket mount that we just installed, and then once they're in there, then you can tighten down those bolts so that the pump grabs onto the mount. These are really convenient because if you need to get the pump out maybe for some maintenance or you need to change things up a little bit, you can just undo the bolts ever so slightly at the back there and you can pull the hydraulic pump straight out of the boat. So once you're happy with where the pumps are located and they are installed, the next thing to do is to basically connect the system up. So grab those hydraulic Raptor lines. Now, your options here are to either drill through the fiberglass boat or aluminium boat, whatever you've got, and then pass the line through and connect it to the hydraulic pump. For me, because there's a lot of cable and I see my boat as very much a, a project boat, there might be some brands on here in the future that aren't the same as the Minn Kota Raptor. I didn't want to really drill through my boat. So what I did, I went through the, the charger port, the external charger port that came with the boat. Now, I don't have an external charger on this boat anymore, so it's a hole that is just sitting there vacant. So I went into the boat on the left-hand side there, I can actually fit all four cables in the recess that is available. I then coiled all the excess in the back left of the boat here and then passed the hydraulic line that I needed to the corresponding pump.
And here's where that tip I talked about earlier hopefully pays a bit of fruition. The green cap hopefully is still on the green line and the black cap is on the black line. What you'll need to do is remove the caps that are on the hydraulic pump themselves, just located here, and then attach the corresponding line to that fitting. So you've got a couple of options for power here, whether you run it directly onto the battery like I did, or maybe have another isolation switch somewhere in the circuit, that's really up to you. The reason I went direct onto the battery is because I don't want to get out of my car when I'm reversing my boat into my garage shed that I've got here, and I need to lower and raise the arms whenever I'm going in and out of the garage shed door. The other thing that I do do is if I'm going to long-term storage, like three or four weeks, if I'm not, fishing for three or four weeks, I just pop those fuses out of the lines for the power there, and that isolates the Raptors anyway. Just think, have a think about how you want to run it. You can definitely run it off your 12 volt accessory side on behind the isolate switch in the circuit so that you do have control over whether the unit has power or not. Up to you. So the final thing to do in the mechanical install itself is to prime the lines with the hydraulic fluid that comes in the box. Now, that hydraulic fluid, let me tell you, after installing a couple of them now, you need the whole bottle. If you've got a significant amount of left, you've probably done something a little bit wrong and you're probably gonna need to relook at what you've done. To prime the line, the first thing you need to do is extend the Raptor anchor so that it is sitting on the ground. Then use some sort of funnel and fill the reservoir till it hits the maximum fill line. When the fluid hits the maximum fill line, then add the cap back to the reservoir and press up and down to cycle the spike up and down. And you can hear the unit feeding. As you do that, you'll notice that the line will prime and you might get a little bit of shuddering or bit of random movement in the pole. And that's natural. The, the fluid has air in the line at the time, so it's not going to work perfectly straight away, but that will only happen for this small procedure. As you do command the spike up and down, the fluid that's in the reservoir will go into the line and prime, and thus the reservoir will start to empty. As the reservoir empties and gets to the min line, it'll be your job to remove the cap and add more hydraulic fluid as you go. From there, it's a rinse repeat. Cycle up and down and refill fluid as you need to. Now the book says to do this a minimum of 10 times and that's really gonna work the air out of the line that is available. Unfortunately though, you're not gonna get a full cycle. So what I mean by that is you cannot extend at the back of your driveway the pole to its full extent down. So the next time that you're on the water, you're gonna need to then extend the poles a couple of times, cycle them full down and full up and that'll get the last bit of air out of your line. Having done it twice now, at the end of the priming procedure, the bottle will be empty and the max fill line and the fluid, the hydraulic fluid will sit basically at the max fill line of the uh, reservoir. So the last point of the install is the pairing of the units. Now, if you only bought one unit, you don't have to worry about anything. All the controls that come with the in the pack are actually already paired and I think that's convenient from Minkota, so thanks for that. If you are, however, like me and you have bought uh, two Raptors to go on the back of your boat, you're gonna need to do a couple of things. Now, I'm not gonna step you through the instructions here because the instructions are really self-explanatory and they're actually quite good. It's really an easy process, but the installation instructions will help you out. Right, so let's wrap this up and I've got a couple of maintenance tips here for you whilst we wait for the full review. Remember, it'll come in a couple of months, but uh, I've been pretty impressed with the product so far and I've been really happy with how it's been performing. At the first point of maintenance I've got, it doesn't matter if you've got an eight foot Raptor or a 10 foot Raptor, it's a good idea 
to watch the nuts and the bolts that are on the Raptor itself. This happens with the other brands as well, but if you consider you driving around and the rocky roads and the shuddering that happens in the Raptor as you're driving around, as well as those tensional forces that occur on the Raptor when it's down and implanted into the weed bed or the sand when the boat's moving around for tide and the wind, there's a lot of force and twisting area, uh, twisting moments in there. So it's a good idea to build into your post trip routine. It doesn't have to be every single trip, but every after every couple that you have a look at the bolts and make sure that they are nipped up and nice and tight. I went for four months without doing that on the port side Raptor and then when I installed this one, the starboard side Raptor, I gave each of them a bit of a shake and I did notice that the port side one had loosened ever so slightly. After I was given the heads up about that, thanks again Manning to River Marine, they nipped them up for me and tightened them down and then I got no movement on either of them, which is great. The second tip has got to be with double sided Velcro tape. Now I got a length of tape here from my local hardware store and just wrapped it around the Minn Kota Raptor for transit. These for me are kind of like safety straps. I've got a couple of kids in my car, including a four-year-old that loves to push buttons and remotes. So by putting that little bit of Velcro around there, I ensured that whilst we were going down the highway, you know, at 60 mile an hour, 100K an hour, he uh, did not push the buttons and then extend the Raptors onto the ground. Not only that, but it also saves you getting a nick. So if the line takes a rock or some sort of fraying occurs and you lose all that hydraulic pressure, the default for the Raptors is to fall away because the hydraulic pressure is gone that is keeping them up. So having a bit of double-sided Velcro around the Raptor is more than enough to hold it in place and just provide a little bit more support during transit. Now I've got a fair bit to say about the product in the review, both constructive and positive about the Raptors. I actually really like them. They're, they've performed really, really well. Smash that subscribe button so that you can stay in touch if you are looking for that review. But for the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.